Ten years ago, the internet was an escape from reality. Today, real life is an escape from the internet. As of 2023, there are over 4.5 billion social media users worldwide, with the average user spending around 150 minutes daily on social media. But that's just the global average, including me, you, and every other person in the world. The craziest part is some teenagers report more than 8 hours used daily. In those hours spent online, we're beginning to see the harmful impacts on mental health, such as loneliness, anxiety, fear of missing out, social comparison, and depression. It is estimated that over 200 million people worldwide suffer from some form of social media or internet addiction. What starts as harmless scrolling can quickly become a compulsion, with minutes quickly turning into hours. Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok are proving to be the most addictive. But why is that? To answer this, we first need to discuss dopamine. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that is released in the brain in response to novel and exciting stimuli. It is associated with feelings of pleasure and reward, and is often referred to as the feel-good chemical. However, prolonged exposure to activities that trigger dopamine release, such as social media use, can lead to addiction-like behaviors. Almost all pleasurable experiences are linked to dopamine release. This includes shopping, enjoying a delicious meal, alcohol, sex, working out, pretty much anything that gives us instant gratification. As your brain begins to associate a particular activity with a feeling of euphoria, it triggers this craving to repeat the same behavior over and over and over again. Cravings are often the first sign of addiction. Over time, our brain builds a tolerance when presented with the same level of stimulus. As a consequence, we need more stimulus to achieve the same high. But what keeps us hooked on social media isn't just the pleasure rush of likes, but it's rather the intermittent absence of the like that keeps us engaged. I want to emphasize that addiction is a complex mechanism and explaining it would need a whole video for itself. Let me know by writing it in the comment section below. According to psychoanalytic theory, we can explain it through the idea of id, the instinctual and primitive part of the psyche that unconsciously seeks immediate gratification of basic needs and urges. In other words, the id's job is to avoid suffering. This suffering can take many forms. It could be boredom, physical pain, depression, anxiety, and even feeling inadequate. And how it avoids the suffering is simple, instant gratification. Whether it be eating ice cream instead of an apple or scrolling TikTok instead of studying, the list just goes on. Like Mark Manson once tweeted, the avoidance of suffering is a form of suffering. The avoidance of struggle is a struggle. Hiding what is shameful is itself a form of shame. But to really grow, one has to first endure suffering. We can also view addiction from a physiological perspective. Similar to other highly motivated states, addictive behaviors like scrolling through TikTok leads to weakening of synapses in the prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for the brain's highest functions. The prefrontal cortex helps us regulate our thoughts, actions, and emotions. The when the neural connections in this area weaken, it negatively affects our ability to control our attention, behavior, and emotions. Additionally, addiction affects the brain's executive functions, centered in the prefrontal cortex. Individuals who develop an addiction may not even realize that their behavior is causing problems for themselves and others. Over time, the pursuit of this euphoria can dominate someone's life. All forms of addiction can induce a sense of hopelessness and feelings of failure, as well as shame and guilt. As a side note, the brain is plastic, meaning it can change its connections and rewire itself and these changes are reversible. So to all my neurotic friends out there, don't worry, this isn't the end of the world. Check out my website, link in the description if you want free guides and shit, cause I know it's hard seeing a shrink, it's expensive, and the waiting times are disgustingly long. So yeah, completely free, check it out if you want, send me a message if there's something you want me to cover, or write it down below. Social media has undoubtedly integrated itself into society, but the question remains, why is social media so addictive? 
We often hear that social media gives us dopamine hit after dopamine hit. When we first get on social media, say it's the first thing in the morning or after a long period of time, the amount of dopamine that's released is quite substantial. In other words, it's novel. That video seriously makes me laugh. Let me check my email again. Oh man, nothing from Lawrence yet? Whatever, weak. Uh, I gotta see that post from Cloud again. Remember that dopamine is all about novelty surprise. It gives us the sense that we are on some exciting track. It puts us in the state of anticipation. It almost always seeks for external stimulus. And when we are in the pursuit of this stimulus, dopamine can be quite the high. That's dopamine in a nutshell. Social media has never been as easily accessible as it is today. With just a few taps on the screen, we're instantly welcomed to this digital world of distraction. When we recognize the pleasure this brings us, our brain releases surges of dopamine each time we log on. I noticed when I got on my phone after a long study session or after finishing work or even after class, it was very stimulating compared to other tasks. But very quickly, when scrolling through social media, you're no longer getting that novelty, but you're continuing to do it where you almost don't know why you're doing it. At that point, it shifts over to something that's a bit more like an obsessive compulsive behavior. We can define obsessions as recurrent thoughts, impulses or images that interfere with one's mental functioning, while compulsions are actions and repetitive behaviors that are experienced as compulsory. These compulsions can significantly affect one's functioning, and the severity of these symptoms can vary from person to person. However, it's important to note that the act of carrying out a compulsion only serves to increase the obsession. This is very different from being obsessed with food or cleanliness, where carrying out the compulsion may provide anxiety relief. In the case of OCD, there is no anxiety relief from carrying out the compulsion. With obsessive compulsive behaviors like scrolling through social media, the dopamine quickly decreases and we've all been there. You're scrolling and you're thinking, why the fuck am I doing this? This isn't that interesting. Nowadays, social media algorithms are very clever. Their job is to catch your attention, just like a fisherman trying to catch a fish. With the right bait, the fish will always come. Algorithms today function on the most powerful way to keep people repeating a behavior, and that is intermittent random reward. You never know when you're gonna hit jackpot. So you keep on scrolling and scrolling through your feed. You see a lot of random shit that bores you. But as you're about to leave the app, suddenly, out of the fucking blue, you see a post that hooks your attention. It's usually very stimulating and your brain goes crazy as a surge of dopamine is released. Now that the dopamine reward system is working, it's waiting for the next hit that you never know when is gonna come. It's comparable to gambling or substance use disorder. Social media can be viewed as initially being a very dopaminergic driving reward, giving the user a sense of surprise and excitement, but it can very quickly turn into something similar to obsessive compulsive disorder. Depending on what your definition is, this behavior could be considered a disease but there is still debate over when this behavior becomes addictive. Now, professionally speaking, social media addiction is not an official diagnosis, but overuse is becoming increasingly common and may have serious consequences on both physical and mental health. But when does it become harmful? Medically speaking, we can only say something is a disorder when it interferes with daily functioning. One very well documented and studied phenomenon is that social media traps its users into endless scrolling loops leading to social comparison. Our feeds are carefully curated to appeal to our personalities, with feeds showing posts of the celebrities we love, ads personalized for our interests, and dumbass meme pages. However, one has to note that we are vulnerable to frequent and extreme social comparison. People often only share their best moments, leading others to believe that their lives are perfect and causing them to feel inadequate in comparison. Did you know that the average person today sees more beautiful people in a matter of seconds than Genghis Khan saw in his entire lifetime? Imagine the hardships of being a teenager today, constantly being bombarded with images on Instagram of people who portray their lives as perfect, hiding their flaws through Photoshop and plastic surgery, the standards for what was once considered naturally achievable have dramatically changed over the past decades. As a consequence, our perception of what is normal has become distorted to something bizarre and unrealistic. It's no wonder the number of teenagers suffering from mental illness has increased dramatically over the past years, not to mention the suicide rates. This is worrying, and if you need help, reach out to someone, whether it be your family, friends, associates, or a professional. Some people with an already fragile self-esteem may try to cope by attacking other people's sense of self, which can lead to cyberbullying. Think about what our phones are capable of. They're essentially supercomputers. With advanced facial tracking, facial recognition, and facial augmentation using AI, image-based apps have created questionable filters, including ones designed to make a user appear prettier. This in itself could contribute to a distorted body image of oneself. 
the reality is I felt sad and unfulfilled being on social media. The only thing I got was a quick high, a small escape from reality. I ended up procrastinating and feeling ashamed of myself, constantly comparing my life to others. The truth is, social media didn't help me move forward in life. I've tried several times to get off social media before, but honestly, it's not that easy. All my friends are on it, and I enjoy seeing their updates and messages. However, I was scared of letting it all go because of FOMO. I was scared of missing out. But in reality, my close friends still reach out to me and send me text messages even if I wasn't on social media. I mean, sure, I missed out on some of my friends' stories and memes, but at the end of the day, it didn't really matter. I was happy nevertheless. I appreciate it more when people tell me their stories in person. Maybe a weird association, but I felt like I was a kid again. When I was younger, I didn't have any phone. No Facebook, Instagram, or Snapchat. It was all face to face. To be honest, my relationships have only improved since I stopped using social media. It's only been three months, which isn't that long, but long enough for me to have noticed a difference. If you want to delete your social medias, now that's not for me to tell you. That's your choice to make. But I remember a friend once told me, are you the pawn or the player in your game of life? And what he meant by that was, do you feel in control of your life or do you feel like you're being controlled by outside forces? Here's a list of the signs that you may be addicted. Please pause the video if you're interested in reading them. If they apply to you, maybe it's time for a change, but it's your choice to make. The main reason for excessive social media use among other things include avoiding boredom rather than communicating or seeking information. Instagram was primarily built for sharing pictures. The root cause of all addictions is dopamine addiction. But like any bad habit, it can be replaced by doing good things too. High intensity workout, taking a cold shower, joking around with your friends, reading a good book, and not to mention good sleep. I mean, this isn't rocket science. I know what's good for me, and you know what's good for you. We all know it, but what is it to you? If you're struggling with excessive social media usage and want to do something about it, I can probably make a self-help video guide. If you want to see that, leave a comment below. As I discussed earlier, I just finished med school. I'm not a psychiatrist yet, but I want to give you guys the best information and hopefully everything I shared today was helpful or at least interesting. On my website, you'll find a summary of everything we discussed in this video, as well as some tips and tricks to help you control your social media usage. Please check it out if you're interested. As a little side note, some people may achieve recovery by themselves. Others might benefit from the support of a community, whilst others might prefer professional help. The road to recovery is hard but it's not impossible. Relapses are common, but they're definitely not the end of the road. When you stumble and fall, pick yourself up, shake the dust off and try again. At the end of the day, you are your own master. You shouldn't completely let go of social media. I mean, I still use Snapchat. Are you fucking for real? You I mean, I still use Snapchat because that's how most of my friends reach out to me. You know, I need to adapt to my situation. I can't expect my friends to adapt to my circumstances. For many of us, social media can be a rewarding experience that connects us with people all around the world. And like my buddy Socrates once said, all things in moderation, including moderation. Try to find a healthy balance that works for you. But if you genuinely feel like it's doing more harm than good, take a step back, breathe, and live life one step at a time. Maybe look up from your screen, because there is another world out there besides for the one you're holding right now. If you found this video helpful or enjoyed it, please share it with your family or friends. And if it's not too much to ask for, Give this video a like for the algorithm. Bye-bye.